Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Abot Kenny here in Venice. That's another hustler's paradise. Where any place you like, that's why this is hustler's paradise. All you gotta be is nice to pull a heist. You could kick it in your trucks or in your nights. West Coast represent for all my life. That's why. I've been posting up here the last couple of weeks, showcasing the music. Prince Danny, C. Poppy. Everybody's uh, been very supportive. If there's one thing I've learned about Hustler's Paradise, is that you can get it anywhere. All you have to do is show up for yourself. These markets that I post up at are no different from any other markets in San Diego to San Francisco, Los Angeles, Las Vegas. It's really you showing up for yourself and providing a gift to the world. Be present with a present for the world. People are ecstatic to see you. People are happy to meet you, greet you. It's one thing to meet somebody in person as opposed to follow somebody online. Like if you get to meet the artist, you're in love with them forever because you got to meet and shake their hand and take a picture and take a piece of their merch home with you. We provide an experience for everybody around us. Given that you know you're working hard on your art and that your art reflects you know what you're doing. Is it Taco Tuesday today or what? <laughs> Enjoy. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to vlog number 15. I'm here in Los Angeles, Abot Kenny, printing out some merch, some custom merch. Today we got Dirty Leches hat. We're gonna produce the first SD LA humble hat. Ladies and gentlemen, you are witnessing the first ever made Venice glow in the dark. Design right here. We're working out of the van. We got two machines. This one just finished. Let's get it. The first ever. The craftsmanship. This is what we're looking at, y'all. Let me show y'all. Right over here. Right there, right there. Right there, right there. Check it out. The first ever LA drip. Well, that's a nice size, actually. It's not too big. I thought it was going to be too big. The first ever produced C Poppy LA edition designed by your boy Sir Daniel. <gasps> Jeez Louise, this is sexy. either because I had a cup of coffee today but I'm fucking got the jitters or well, I'm just really excited about this oh shit too deep huh say it in the comments mm. there it is y'all check that shit out sheesh louish sexy little thing on my mind
chop them. You only really gotta get the long ones because the, the small ones just go really small much. Ta-da! This little pelito right here. Ta-da! This little pelito. Ta-da! And that one too, huh? Ta-da! Ready everybody with me. Ta-da! And check this out. This is the coolest part. You guys ready? Fucking glow in the dark. I'm going to charge this up right here in the light real quick. Venice. And then I want you guys to see this. Oh, you can't really see. Because there's too much light in here. Give a huge shout out to my boy Short Bus Inc. Ever since you touched my van I've had a hundred percent battery for the past two months now and I've been able to work at night due to the fact that I got a DC to DC converter so while I'm driving my batteries are charging so I'm always at a hundred percent lit <clears throat> talking out loud speaking out loud sometimes I feel like I was built for this like this lifestyle Right now, I'm warming up water because I want to take a shower. This is my hula hoop that I hang a shower curtain from. And I warm up the water because I got a five gallon bucket here of clean water for showering. I'll probably use about a gallon and a half or two now that I have short hair. But as I sit here, or as I stand here and Warm the water and roll, roll my blunt, my tobacco cigarette, cigar. Um, I think about the times when I was a young kid in the backyard and my mom, we had this like big metal drum, I guess you'd like, wash clothes in there. And my mom would let me shower like in the backyard as a little kid. Um, and I thought it was like so much fun. It was kind of like, I don't know, like, I don't know, imagine having a water balloon fight, but. Just get a fucking shower outside. Um, the, I shower outside in this lifestyle, you know what I'm saying? It's just kind of weird, you know, but I thank my parents because they raised me, like, to be tough, you know? Like, the elements don't phase me. Um, they really gave me that perspective of, like, freedom. I think that's why I even have, like, a, a nightmare about a bus. I'm driving my old... Uh, it, we had a family wagon growing up and I often think about this dream that I used to have as a kid where it was me driving in the van down my block and it had no brakes the van had no brakes and I'm just like turning these corners hot I never crashed I think it that you know I ended up slowing down and everything was safe but I just remember a lot of I, I have a lot of memories, you know, while I'm doing this van life because I feel like it correlates, you know, with the lifestyle that I'm living right now. So I kind of feel like life prepped me for this. Didn't know what to expect, you know, but I did get prepped in having certain, uh, what's the word I'm saying, like perspectives on things, you know. So yeah, whenever I want to shower and have a warm shower, you know what I'm saying, like hot water, especially when it's cold in the winter. I warm up water on the stove top, mix it with a five gallon water, uh, fresh water. This is my second one, uh, second pour of boiling water and it's still fucking cold. Okay, I think it takes me about like three or four of those to really change the temperature. Or maybe like five to get it like super piping hot, but I typically probably do like three just because I don't know. I feel like I'm wasting gas, you know, to cook. It's very, uh, like, what's the word I'm looking for? You have to 
know how to manage, you know, like your water and your fucking gas and how much you can do everything. I mean, not to say, like, I haven't filled up this fucking tank in, like, months, you know what I'm saying? And been doing this whole routine, cooking this every day, you know what I'm saying? Every day I'm warming up water, drinking coffee, tea, whatever it is. Um, it sounds like it's going out. Hopefully it doesn't. Um, but, yeah, I'm probably showering, like, once every three days or something. Just wash my face in the morning. Right here in the sink. Got a little foot pump. Woohoo! Alright, so it took me like four or five times for sure. Yeah, I'm not taking a cold shower. Um, time to set up the hoops. The hula hoops. The hoop, there it is. Oh, fuck. Boom. <laughs> Pretty simple. Yeah. It doesn't take too long, honestly. You have a little patience. Most of us are in a rush. You know, we're going places, we're doing things, but van life is really like, all right, this is this time is dedicated to shower. This whole hour. <laughs> so I'm make that's it. I'm not doing nothing during this time. So I don't mind that it takes me a little bit of time to set up. Um, Take the same shower as everybody else. Wash my ass. <laughs> Shampoo. That's that. I'm gonna put my curtains up. And these are my blackout curtains. Yep. this we'll make it sexy watch oh la verga que chingo ok maguey caca de wey tada tada Early in the morning, I will get to wake up, fold all the curtains. During the night, I have a Wabasto heater running, so I leave the curtains to hang, and the heater just dries them all up. So when I wake up, all I gotta do is break it down, fold, and I'm ready to go. So every day, we run the same rudiment. We wake up, we go out for a run, we hit Abakini, we hustle all day. And then at sunset time, we come back to our spot. Um, after 6, you get free parking. So we post up, we get the bike ready, and we just leave it all behind. We thank the Lord, we thank the universe, we thank Venice for the abundance, and we go out. On this journey, I've grown, I've accepted, I've acknowledged, I've submitted to the fact that the universe is in control of everything and all i have to do is ask and i shall receive you know given that i'm doing everything to, to receive these uh blessings um but just going out into public you know and doing what i do i have to have trust in the universe and i've always looked over my shoulder you know when i'm recording and i'm putting my camera down and i right away like these shots I always look back and like, man, some motherfucker can just pick up my shit and just start running with it, you know. And I think like the whole robbery thing really amplified that sensation of like, do you really trust the universe? Can I still go out and continue to produce what I'm producing and not be fearful that somebody's going to fucking rob me or just, you know, do some sort of malice to me? The universe is talking to me. It's like, do you really trust me? Are you really, you know? Or are you, you know, so fuck yeah, I continue to create my content, I can continue to, to do the exact same things, the exact same path that I was on. It's unfortunate, you know, that those kind of incidents fuck up everything in my flow, but to me, it's my divine connection with the universe to be like, fuck yeah, I trust the universe. I fucking trust the universe. I will leave my camera out to get this fucking shot. I will produce the things that I, I will do what I need to do to get the shots. I'm willing to go far. 
I'm willing to go fast. And I'm willing to leave it all behind. If I haven't shown myself, proven it to to myself, how far are you willing to go? I'm willing to go fucking far. I'm from San Diego. I'm fucking two hours in LA, four hours in Santa Barbara, you know, five hours in Las Vegas, 10 hours to go to San Francisco, a whole month to make it to Miami. I'm willing to go far. I'm willing to go beyond my comfort zone. I'm willing to go and leave my old life behind me because this one is way more exciting. I'm so blessed and fortunate to be able to do what I do, but be- that's because I have the courage and the fucking cajones to, to do it. A lot of people dream of this shit and they say, I wish, I wish, but you can't. they can't leave everything behind. They've grown attached and they've, they've grown... Um, son un clavo. They're a nail... Uh, stuck in the wood now and they can't fucking move and that's where I'm trying to avoid in my life I don't want to feel like a fucking nail that's just you know I'm stuck I want to be able to roam freely stretch my arms as far as wide as possible um, and enjoy life and and, and be able to live and make a living off of it Um, so I'm willing to do different I'm willing to do an extraordinary job I'm willing to put in the extra work for that extra mile I'm willing to do all of that and it's because of my passion for life, my passion and my ambition to show people, hey, man, there's another way. There's another side of life that we're not being shown. And I just want to show you guys this side of life. It's really hard to find people to go through that process with you. I just got Dali. Dali's down for anything. Dali don't ask questions. Dali don't. Dali's a ride or die, you know. So I understand why it's really hard to be. To keep up with me. It's really hard for me to have friends right now. It's if Unless they're like tied into my alignment. You know. Whether they're a photographer. Or a skater. Or whatever it is. You know. It's really hard to, to follow and keep up with me. Because I move so much. I got big goals. I got big dreams. And that shit scares people sometimes. And I'm okay with that. You know. It's not lonely at the top. There's so many people at the top. It's just everybody's busy, you know. Everybody's working to to get up to the top. That it's like when you get there, cool. Oh, shit, I am really not the only one. There's a lot of other people out here that work just as hard or harder than me. And that shit motivates me every day. To I see a new mountain, I'm going to climb that one. And I see a new journey, I got to do that. To have My dream is to have a place of my own where I can... Have Dali just fucking rest, you know. We don't have a backyard. We don't have a, a front yard. We we got ocean fronts right now, you know what I'm saying? But I I dream for the day that our music is able to provide everything for us, and I'm just working my ass off to get to reach that. I need to bless people now before it's too late. I need to give thanks to all the families that help support me and raise me. I need to give back to to all my cousins and all my brothers and and sisters that have been supporting my my process that have. I've been, you know, picking me up when I fall down. And every day I'm just fucking trying to crack the code, trying to crack my code and figure out how to break a fucking record, you know, at my level. I'm under pressure, so call me precious. I'm a diamond in the rough, going and going and clean me up. I'm under pressure, I'm taking measures. Please don't push me to the edge, got a ruler to your head, I'm under pressure, I need more cheddar. And there you have it, vlog number 15, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the support. Tune in next week for vlog 16, as we make our way to San Diego to celebrate Giovanni's birthday, my birthday, Comspert's birthday, and my 15th van show. See you then, adios.